went and picked up some 12 foot 2 by 10s get to remove all these boxes out of the way measure this I think I can fit four three by three foot raised beds up against this fence and I'm gonna plant some elderberries there four different varieties and uh, it's about the only way that I can grow anything out here on this hard Kentucky clay so I'll walk you through how I do that and if you've got hard clay soil this works great um, I do almost all my fruit trees and raised beds um, my whole entire gardens and raised beds and it works very well okay I got the cardboard moved and the area cleaned up somewhat I've got the tiller out here I'm going to use it to help level the ground I've got a level for when I set the beds a screw gun for when I put the beds together um, a tape measure a square and a pencil and a saw and I'm basically making three foot by three foot beds so I'm cutting off 36 inch sections from a 2x12 each 2x12 will give me uh, four pieces which makes a box and uh, then I'll assemble them Cutting these right on the back of my truck, which makes it kind of fun, convenient, but fun. This is never a good thing to see happen. Of course, it's not going to do it on camera. Literally, I think that this motor just burned up and this Porter cable saw. Smoke, white smoke started rolling out of these vents. And that was the end of it. Won't even turn. Well, I burn up the circular saw and I'm not sure exactly when I bought that. I'd almost always owned DeWalt tools as long as I can remember, but I bought these Porter cables, I guess it was about three years ago. And uh, the circular saw was obviously probably used the most. It's built, uh, let's see, six and eight. It's built 14 raised beds, a chicken coop, a rabbit hutch, and a uh, gate on my patio. It's not really made that many cuts. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I thought I would give the Porter Cable Tools a chance because they were considerably cheaper than the DeWalt's but I'm not sure if I'm going to order a DeWalt as a replacement or a Porter cable. In the meantime I'm going to use this jigsaw to finish this because I got to get this stuff done no matter what. I mean I got to get this done and uh, it's just the way it'll have to be. It'll take longer to cut. The edges probably won't be as smooth but we're going to get it done one way or the other as i always say we'll see how long it takes to cut this then i'll kind of have an idea <laughs> taking a long time <laughs> and I felt the camera fall of course
course. YouTube videos, y'all have no idea how much fun they are. How much time we actually put into them for people to not even enjoy it. Going to have to excuse the neighbor mowing their yard. All I'm going to do though is put two screws in each end of this and uh, doesn't have to be too secure. Usually I would use a 4x4 in the corners or even a 2x4 as extra support. But in all honesty, again, this is on the hillside, and at least three sides are going to be down in the ground by the time I get it leveled. So I'm just going to use the screws to basically hold the form together, not necessarily for structural strength. All right. So now with the basic box formed, I'm going to lay it on the ground and then I'm going to check to see how level the top of it is and that will tell me where I need to dig down using the tiller. I've got to take these three sides, this U-shape right here the tiller to uh, dig down so I can get the box level. What I'm actually doing is using the tiller to kind of like mark where I need to go, the directions I need to go. Then that gives me a reference point when I actually go to level this out. You know, for what it's off on that one side, I'm not even going to worry about it. So the next thing I do, once I have the box leveled, is I use a square to get it relatively square. Okay, we got uh, Ninja Cat here, who's been annoying me all day long out here uh, so I got the edges filled in doesn't have to be perfect if you know anything about the way I do things eventually this will have uh, mulch down pine mulch just like in the garden which for the orchard which normally does very well but I didn't have a chance to refresh it this year because COVID-19 anyways so I take an eye line the inside of the box with cardboard and I fold the edges up to kind of like help when I put the soil in I make sure the edges are pushed up against the uh, edge as close as I can and I know there's probably going to be people saying something like oh my god he's using cardboard that has collar on it or lamination or marking paint and, uh, you know, I think that people just worry too much about things in life these days. And I'm probably much older than many of you watching this. And I've been doing this for years. And other than this third arm growing out of my back, I'm perfectly healthy. Like, I just, I don't see the reason to get upset and worry over the littlest of details because we're all just tiny ants in a great big ant colony. And if you die, it doesn't matter. <laughs> a few people are going to miss you. 
But when you look at the percentage of the world population as a whole, you're basically nothing. So friggin' use whatever cardboard you got. Enjoy gardening. Enjoy life while you've got it. Stop being so uptight and afraid of everything. All right, so let me tell you what I, I'm doing here. Every time I set up a new bed, not only do I have the cardboard in the bottom as a weed barrier and on the sides, and there might be some gaps, but that's okay. Um, it'll take this cardboard quite a bit of time to break down. And by then, the weeds will be dead. Might be a few poke up around the edges, but they're easy to pull out because it's a raised bed. But in a new bed, a lot of people, they put compost on their plants on the top soil. And the nu nutrients get washed down into the ground. And feeds the plants but every time that I build a new raised bed I use compost in the bottom because that's where the new roots are going to need them first now this is a goat hard pack where I've cleaned the goat barn out it's straw with pee and goat poop and I probably cleaned it out a couple months ago so it's been rained on a few times not as strong but the other thing is too it's June and I'm not actually going to plant the elder, elderberries until in the fall, maybe around October or September. Now, there's a reason for that, and that is uh, our natural soil here is 7.0, and elderberries prefer an acidic soil. So what I'm doing is I'm going to get the beds built and then treat the soil from now until fall to get it, the pH to lower some because I'm basically using store-bought, soil which i'll talk more about in a minute and uh i'll use some espoma uh, soil acidifier which is what i use on my blueberries it works great a uh, three by three foot bed requires about two and a half to three cups to bring it down one point and the other thing is too uh, more about the soil both this is uh this evergreen soil comes from lowe's I really like it in the raised beds. It's basically like shredded pine leaves or needles, and it's got maybe some sort of, honestly, it looks like cow manure. It kind of smells like cow manure. I don't really know what the makeup of it is, but it's organic. I like it in raised beds. It does a really good job. Now, Home Depot also has a cheap topsoil that kind of looks like little rocks or pebbles, almost looks like cat litter. And I like it too, but there's a huge difference between the two. The one from Home Depot is really made to fill in like low spots in your yard. So it's kind of bulky. Where this is really fine and it's, and it's pretty woody and organic. The topsoil from Lowe's, this evergreen soil is very fine. It's woody. It's got a lot of or, organic stuff in it. And the one from Home Depot doesn't. Now I use both. But what I, what I do initially is I fill the bed with whatever I have on hand, which right now happens to be this in the pine. And I leave the bed a little bit short. And then I come back and put whichever one that I didn't use on the top layer. And then I till it under before I plant the plants. And what that does is that gives me some mass that also aerates the soil and kind of mixes it up and seems to do a really good job. So I use them both. Right now this is what I've got. Um, I'm not sure how many bags it's going to take because I'm going to put a pretty hefty la layer of this uh, straw and goat manure and pea down first. And of course it's going to break down over the next couple months once it gets wet. And uh, I'll have to top them off again in the fall anyways. But this is what I do and we're getting ready to do that now. Cat, you're going to have to move. One thing that you have to know about store-bought soil, no matter where you get it from, unless you're buying it in bulk, if you buy bag soil, it's sterile. It's sterile and it's pH 7. All of the helpful organisms that are in soil that are required for plants to grow are not in store-bought bag soil. They can't, they can't do it because you'd be shipping 
organisms across state lines and that sort of thing or even other countries that maybe don't exist there and that could be catastrophic so all store-bought bag soil is sterile you always want to build your raised beds six months to a year in advance if you're going to use store-bought bag soil if you don't your plants are not going to grow very well <laughs> um, it's a common thing you see on social media groups where people build raised beds and the first year they are asking lots of questions like what's wrong with my vegetable garden you know they built a four by eight raised bed and they got a few vegetables in there and it's not growing very well and they're talking about how they're fertilizing it and everything and the real reason is because it doesn't have those helpful organisms now i'm going to link to two different posts above that show you how i plant things because again the elderberries aren't actually getting planted until in the fall even though i have them already because i've got to get this uh, soil ph correct and plus i want to give microorganisms a chance to move in and uh that that'll take some time and the other thing is too when you see how I plant in these other plants, I'm actually bringing some of the soil from down below this bed to the top when I use that auger to dig the hole. And that helps, you know, spread the microorganisms throughout the soil. But that's something you need to be aware of. All store-bought bag soil is sterile. pH 7. added to the elderberry bed um, it's been a couple of weeks since I built this box and I put some soil in it and the soil has settled and I kind of packed it down by walking on it and it was about maybe a half full so I've got a numerous compost piles on the property one is last year's compost it's ready to use now this one actually come out of this year's compost pile that's still breaking down but it's going to be several months before I plant anything in these. And I know that this is super rich in nitrogen. Um, it's got grass clippings, straw from the goat barn, which is basically a hard pack that's like saturated with goat urine. It's got goat poop in it. And now that I've got that on there, what I'm going to do is um, take it and fill it the rest way up with more bags of soil. Now... This is the cart that I'm getting it on. And I'm going to do basically the same thing too with this. More soil is going to go in until I get close to the finished level. And then I'll put the goat uh, straw with urine and goat poop and grass clippings that aren't broke down yet. Because again, the spiral herb garden isn't going to get added seeds until this fall, which will be actually plants for next spring. So to give it plenty of time to break down uh, between now and then. So um, after a couple more good rains and uh, that straw and grass uh, deteriorates, I'll have to add even more to it again before fall. Okay, you can see the first three beds here. Um, what I'm getting ready to do is add the uh, soil acidifier. I use um, this Espoma soil acidifier. And I use it on my blueberries and a few other plants that require some acidic soil. Um, Store-bought soil is generally pH 7. And elderberries, which is what these beds are going to be for, require around a 5.5 to a 6 so I need to drop it one whole point 
and there's a formula you can use on the Espoma website, might even be on the bag, how much you need to use to reduce the soil a certain amount. But I've used it so much, I pretty much know what it's going to take for these beds. Now, they're three foot by three foot, which is nine cubic foot. The beds are about 12 inches deep, but they're not filled all the way. But we'll just round it up to nine cubic foot. And I believe on the back of this, it actually tells you what to use. One pound is equal to two cups. Um, use one and a quarter cups for hydrangeas and blueberries. Apply 12 pounds per 100 square feet. All right, so if you're going to do 100 pounds per 12 square feet, or 100 square feet, 12 pounds per 100 square feet, we know that this is 9 square feet per bed. So that's one-tenth of 100 square feet. Let's just round it up to 10 square feet. That's one-tenth. So that means I need 1.2 pounds per bed, right? I'm going to mu multiply 0.1 times 12, which comes to 1.2. Now, this is a sour cream, 16-ounce sour cream cup. If you add... Um, Espoma to this and fill it full it's almost three quarters of a pound because this weighs lighter than sour cream it doesn't have moisture in it so even though this is one pound for sour cream it's only three quarters of a pound for the Espoma now what I'm going to do is two of these would get me to that 1.2 range it actually be 1.5 but I'm going to do three of these per bed and I'm going to mostly broadcast it the bulk of it in the center because that's where the most of the roots are going to be this spring now when I do it in the fall I'll do it more toward the outer edges but right now I just want to get them in the ground in the fall it's actually July 5th so I've still got plenty of time but I need to add the soil acidifier now so that when I go to plant the elderberries in the fall the soil will be ready it takes several months for this to actually work if you want your pH to be lowered quickly you would use sulfur, powdered sulfur, which this has some sulfur in it, but it's slow release. So I didn't bring a knife out with me. Like what kind of a uh, homesteader am I not having a knife? And the reason why I don't have a knife is because these shorts are kind of baggy and they fall down. These bags are actually pretty tough. All right, that makes it better. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do about three of these on a bed. I'm going to pour this slow because you're going to realize some of this is powdered. And hopefully you can see how I did that kind of in a circular pattern. Now we're not done, but I want to go ahead and put this on the other beds the same way. And let me pick this up and show it to you because I've actually got four beds. Hope and pray you can see that because I can't see the camera. But you should be able to see I've got the bulk of it is mostly in the center. Of the beds. All right now. 
for this to activate it's got to be covered with soil what's the quickest way to do that just rub it in with your hands like this Man, I hate this, but I can't tell where. Yeah, so you get the idea. So one final step. That requires core soil contact because the microbes is what breaks that down and causes it to release. Except for store-bought soil doesn't have microbes in it because it's sterile. So the next thing I do is I take some of my good old trusty straw from the goat barn. It's got high nitrogen and goat poop in it and I put that down and that'll break down and also has some organisms in it that's already breaking down the straw and stuff so I'll cover the tops with that And let me show you what that looks like up close and personal after I figure out how the camera goes right there I think you can see it now not very thick just enough to hold moisture in and offer some beneficial microbes to the tops of the beds to start breaking down that soil acidifier so that completes that and uh, it's about June now, or July 5th, so July, August, September, October, probably sometime in October in about three months, I'll go ahead and plant the elderberries in there. I realized that I forgot to record the video of me planting the elderberries, which I did sometime in October. They are planted all four, one there, one there, one there. And one there but you can refer to my blackberries which are booming even though it's the middle of November and I'll refer you to that video to show you how I use a kind of a modified grandma white method when I plant plants and it works very well